Are you tired of games forcing you to walk or do something completely different from the rest of the gameplay loop? Games that try to be anything but fun? Oh, then Shinobi might just be the game for you. Shinobi doesn't force you to walk or do something boring. It doesn't even have a walk animation. No. It forces you to run and eliminate everything in your path until the end of the game, otherwise a cursed sword is gonna eat your soul. No kidding, to illustrate, this is what happens if you stand idle for too long. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm not kidding when I say this is one of the coolest ninja games you'll ever play. But before diving deeper into this PlayStation 2 hit, we gotta talk about history. Shinobi is a franchise produced by Sega. The first game, simply titled Shinobi, was released in 1987, and it is a side-scrolling game with elements of hack and slash and platform. As the protagonist Joe Musashi, the player will be able to progress the stage by jumping, throwing his unlimited supply of shuriken, perform a few melee attacks, and use ninjutsu against the bad guys. The second game is called Shadow Dancer. Shadow Dancer, gosh, such a badass name. This one is notorious for having the protagonist getting some help from his dog. What a good boy. Sega would go on to produce multiple sequels across several gaming systems, turning this OG 80s game into a household name. The titles were all side-scrollers, but then comes the sixth generation of video games, bringing with it the opportunity to explore the 3D realm. Thanks to an interview with IGN, we can gather a bit of the mindset behind the development. According to the president of Overworks, the developer behind the game, the biggest change, naturally, is the shift from 2D to 3D. Among the new elements are the stealth dash and the sword you use in combat. But a staple of the original games in the form of throwables still remains, that is the shuriken. The producer Takashi Uryu adds the double jump as a gameplay feature from the previous games to preserve the athleticism of the character's movements. He's not kidding, the protagonist in this game is one of the most agile and athletic characters I've ever had the pleasure of playing as. You'll see that throughout the video. At some point, the IGN interviewer asked if the producers considered developing something different in the early stages, something slower. To that, Takashi basically says the ratio of action and adventure of action-adventure games in the market leans much more heavily on the adventure, so they wanted to bring the action aspect to the forefront. Still on the gameplay subject, in a GameSpot interview, Takashi Uryu talks about one of the gameplay hooks, which is the sword eating the player's character's soul. The team did that to encourage players to keep the action coming and fight the enemies instead of the trend of avoiding enemy combat in games at the time. It's interesting to see the team wanted to tackle the different sides of a ninja fiction and focus on the action, amidst the titles in the market focusing on stealth. The producer didn't mention any franchises, but what comes to my mind is franchises such as Tenshu that employs a stealth-oriented gameplay. With that background in mind, you know we're talking about an all-out, pure-blooded, no-BS action game. So let's talk gameplay, shall we? The game features a mix of action and platforming. Hotuma, the protagonist, is agile enough to double jump across the stage aside from clinging to and running on walls. Differently from other games that feature wall running, Hotuma can stay glued to the wall for as long as needed. The game keeps calling those shuriken, but come on guys, I've also watched Naruto, that's a kunai, so that's how I'll be referring to it. You can throw them to paralyze enemies then strike them with your sword, Akujiki. Akujiki is written with one kanji meaning to eat, and another having evil as one of its meanings, so you could say it is an evil devouring sword. The sword will feed on the yin, the evil energy of things. If remained unfed for a long while, the sword will start consuming the player's young. To prevent that from happening, you'll want to keep moving and defeating enemies as efficiently and quickly as possible. For mobility, the player can use the stealth dash, which allows Hotsuma to quickly change position while leaving an after image of himself to pull enemies temporarily. In pro gameplay tip, the running animation looks great, but if you want to move faster, hit the stealth dash button to cover more ground quickly. Or use the wall run, which is also fast and let's be honest, why ground run like a chump when you can wall run? One of the main elements of a gameplay loop is the tate mechanic. Tate means sword fight, but especially in the context of a scene such as a movie or play, it's about the cinematographic, beautiful version of such battles. To achieve that effect, the player must eliminate enemies which will remain frozen in place temporarily, and before the timer runs out you must kill the next and the next increasing Akujiki's power in the process. That will be visually apparent when the sword changes color starting from blue. When the sword changes to magenta, it will be in its most powerful state, allowing you to one-shot enemies easily culminating in a badass animation of your enemies getting torn to pieces after Hotuma strikes an awesome pose. I shall have my revenge. Tate not only looks dope, 
die. But we'll also bring a larger amount of yin, those red orbs, to keep your devilish sword well fed. Among Hotsuma's moves, there's the basic 4-hit sword combo, a 360 roundhound slash, which to my knowledge can only be performed while aiming and making a circular motion, with the analog at the third strike. If you have enough in and Akujiki is glowing, by holding down the square button, Hotsuma will perform a charge attack, making him pierce through enemies. We can combine it with the kunai for some big brain strategy. At the height of a double jump, you can press triangle to unleash a kunai burst and paralyze several enemies at once. By the way, don't sleep on the kunai because they are an integral part of the gameplay and will greatly help you perform tati in the stages. Let us not forget that ninjutsu is part of a shinobi skill set and the game will get you covered. Make sure you collect the makimono, scrolls hidden in the map which will grant you a few special techniques. There is a total of 3 you can choose by pressing up on the d-pad. Ka-en, which means flame, is an AoE fire blast. Dai-jin, meaning god of thunder, is an electric aura that will make Hotuma invulnerable for a short period of time. And kamai -tach. This one's quite interesting. It's a yokai, a supernatural being that rides on whirlwinds and causes painless cuts. So, a flying slash coming in your direction? Makes sense that delivering a flying slash to enemies is exactly what this ninjutsu allows the player to do. The game is split in stages, each one being divided into A and B. At the end of each, there is a stage clear screen with your results. Pro tip here, if you want to chase that sweet ass rank, here are a few pointers. Eliminate every enemy. Pretty self-explanatory, leave no stone uncut and perform as many tate as you can. Boss point. Refers to the number of attacks used to defeat a boss, so the fear of the batter. Makimono. The ninjutsu scrolls. You'll want to collect all and not use them to get some bonus points and less, no damage. <laughs> Well, if you get a no damage run, great, I'm gonna I'm have to say, nice cock, bro. Aside from the ninja scrolls, ha, <laughs> see what I did there? Don't forget to collect Oboto coins to unlock some goodies such as cutscenes and artwork. And listen, the thing about the gameplay is that it's just so fast paced, so focused, the controls are so responsive, there's just something about it. Is there a name for it? I don't know, but there's something about the connection between your brain to your fingers through the buttons you press and the action on screen that gets you to that flow state, you know? It's the dexterity in your hands and the dexterity of your digital avatar becoming as one. And okay, okay, I guess I got carried away, I'll keep it in my pants. What I mean is, this is the type of game that makes you remember why you like playing video games. And as a last gameplay pro tip, the camera. The axis is inverted, so left is right, up is down, right is and that can't be changed. You will of course get used to it, but if you're planning to play a shinobi in a modern game, you'll have to rewire your brain every time to adjust the camera. I decided to simply focus on shinobi for this video, so you might keep that in mind. And finally, the camera will remain fixed in the position you choose, so you can use that to your advantage, like positioning it on top of you, or you can go for a style and have it closer to the ground. <laughs> In terms of presentation, in my opinion, the Shinobi makes great use of the PlayStation 2 capabilities. The game is fast-paced, characters look detailed enough without that blocky aspect reminiscent of the PlayStation 1, there's a good mix of technology and Japanese tradition in the environment, and that scarf, my goodness, tell me that isn't the coolest, most fluid cloth physics you've ever seen. From the programmers that go to that scarf, I have two questions. One, why did y'all smoke? And two, do you have some more? Not gonna lie, cloth physics is another thing I love about video games, so this is me clearly foreshadowing another video. When it comes to enemy variety, there are regular shinobi, the variants that block attacks, the flying hell spawn, the big boys, kunoichi, and there's the BDSM looking bitch who clings to walls and throws those paralyzing kunai at you. Oh, let me not forget the canine ones. There's foxes and dogs. Do you like dogs? Do you find them cute? Adorable? Bet you're gonna love the sword building type. There's something about this trope that devs seem to enjoy. A dog biting a sword and swinging it. We've seen it in Dark Souls, in Elden Ring, and here in Shinobi it's no different. They're gonna mess you up, they're gonna gang up on you and ruin your day. Now, let us talk plot. First of all, I made this video because I think this game deserves to be revisited. It needs more love, so if you plan on trying it for yourself, please skip ahead. But if you're cool with the spoilers, come with me. Game starts in modern day Tokyo. Since the earthquake struck Tokyo, 
A mysterious golden palace has appeared in the center of the capital. The city faces a calamity while a helicopter approaches to respond. Inside it, Hotsuma, the protagonist, who decides to touch down in the coolest fashion possible. Landing the choppers for losers. The leader of the Oboto clan is much too cool for that. In the ground, surrounded by a Tokyo in shambles, Hotsuma is attacked by other shinobi. And this very cutscene teaches us how to play the game. You'll want to use your stealth dash to maneuver around enemies and attack them from behind. These shinobi are none other than his fellow Oboto clan members who have been killed and now have their bodies been controlled by somebody. Hotsuma doesn't waste time, he is quite terse when he simply says he'll avenge his brethren ninja. I shall have my revenge. After traversing the empty streets of Tokyo, we have our first boss encounter, a helicopter. Interesting first fight because the helicopter jumps you in a parking lot as if it was a bully who told you I'll meet you outside, but you can easily take its lunch money if you collected the three scrolls in the stage. Here, a good strategy I found is using your Kamaitachi ninjutsu to launch attacks from a distance and deal tons of damage to it. But Hotsuma won't exactly destroy the helicopter because a Kunoichi appears delivering the final blow. Her name is Ageha, a former member of the Oboto clan. And just by looking at her, you know she's a straight shooter that she's gonna say some truth because those hips, girl, ho oh, ho, they don't lie. Yeah, um, um, dang, Ageha, those are such fruitful hips, it made me change my voice. Hotsuma reminisces a past event with Moritune, his brother and fellow member of the Oboto, then continues to forge ahead through the rooftops of Tokyo. And in the same rooftops, the game seems to cross over with the Die Hard universe with a reference to Nakatomi Plaza. At the end of that stage, Moritune appears as the boss battle. He seems out for revenge from the time when Hotsuma slit his throat with Akujiki, even though Hotsuma himself appears to not recognize him. The tense encounter wasn't enough to keep the developers from placing a little subliminal message in the stage. Skill up, huh? Come on, is that a dig? You saying I have no skill? The game is probably right. At this point in a first playthrough, you might still be learning the controls, so Moritsune is likely to kick the player's butt. So, indeed, you gotta skill up. You have to... Moritsune will keep spamming the first move if you're not careful. The idea is to use your kick to open him up and get some hits in while being careful not to fall to your death or get swarmed by the shinobi he spawns. Or, if you have the three ninja to scroll, the fire technique Kayan can be very effective. After the first encounter, the player can consider this as the true beginning of the game, because after tasting Moritsune's blood a second time, Akujiki awakens and it will be insatiable for the rest of the game. Akujiki has tasted my blood, drank of my soul and has finally awakened. Also, that bully chopper appears one more time trying to hit a missile on our boy Hotsuma, which he dodges with a sick move. Like I said, Hotsuma is much too cool for that to work. When proceeding to save his master Kobushi, Hotsuma is affected by Akujiki. While he staggers, Ageha, who was keeping tabs on his movements like a good shinobi, reveals the danger behind Akujiki. Souls of people are made up of evil and good, yin and yang. Yin is the collection of all the hatred and pain that people feel inside. Akujiki has consumed the yin of men since ancient times. If left unfed, Akujiki will eat away at its wielder's soul. I fear for your life. I am prepared to face my fate. While going further into the shrine, Hotsuma is attacked by Oboro Shinobu, Foxes, and then the pair of siblings Shirogane and Nakagane, cementing the fact that his entire clan was taken over. Not even the younger ones were spared. Kill us. They won't pose much of a challenge if you employ your paralyzing kunai as your main tactic while doing damage to them. At the top of the complex, Kobushi Sensei is injured. But before tending to his master, Hotsuma has to deal with that helicopter again, which apparently didn't learn its lesson the first time. After dealing with the helicopter bully, Master Kobushi speaks of a Hiruko, an apparent old enemy of the Yaboto. He's the one who summoned the Golden Palace and caused the earthquake in Tokyo. 
he was stopped by the Aboro clan and was sealed in this very temple. But somebody has broken the seal. Master Kobushi mentions the Garden of the Shrine will be sacrificed and that is something Hotsuma cannot allow to happen. Our Shinobi knows what he has to do. Hotsuma decides to get in the Tokyo subway, which unsurprisingly is filled with the Bodo Ninja and puppies. Yay! <laughs> Standing in the way is Hakuraku, the dog whisperer boss, who can be rather annoying, but I figured a good strat is to kill the dogs to build up power in the Akajiki then slash away at him. When you teleport, bind his ass and blow it with the Kainjutsu. If need be, use a kunai burst to paralyze everyone including the boss and put Akajiki to work. And after trudging through some cobwebs and hearing Hotsuma make the funniest sound, the only way out of the subway is through that. A mix of spider and tiger, so that's a spiger, a tiger. Anywho, makes you wonder if that monster is another Oboto Shinobi or Hell Spawn, and the answer is yes. Hotsuma continues to seek after the Garden of the Shrine, who was inside one of the spider cocoons until she disappears. Next up is the Burnt Village stage, where Hotsuma finds a fiery shinobi called Homura, then a butterfly lady who had the garden captive. Lady Butterfly goes out with a bang, causing Hotsuma to flee with the girl before they both turn into barbecue. She's Kagari Ubusuna, the garden in charge of keeping Hiroku's spirit sealed. Hotsuma also learns of the sorcerer's devious plans. He's trying to rebuild Yatsuro, who was defeated by the Oboro long ago. It is a weapon powered by the spirits of people killed in the earthquakes that have stricken Tokyo since times of old. And to reactivate Yatsuro, I was to be sacrificed. And before you know it, God damn it! Out of the fire into the flood? Oops, there she goes, snatched away again. Kongo. The next fight is with Kongo, who seems to be straight out of Baki with that face on his chest. And. Apparently, he's a valiant warrior who've always wanted to test his might against Hotsuma. Just be careful when he swings his huge pet shuriken and the fight won't be that challenging. After that, Kagari asks Hotsuma to kill her, for that is the only way to prevent the weapon called Yatsurao from being rebuilt. Hotsuma has been put in that position before. Those memories run deep, but things play out differently now. I am here to kill Hiroko Ubusuna, not you. Meanwhile, Kagari is ensnared again by the next boss, Kuda Kuda. You've met the Dog Whisperer before, now get ready to fight the Snake's Summoner. Be careful when he teleports because you'll get damaged by the White Flash. When he summons the Serpents, paralyze them, strengthen Akujiki and then go damage him. After dealing with the Snakes, Modetune appears and somehow sweeps Kagari away. Thankfully, Agahe is on her side. Hotsuma, I know where Hiroko is. Hiroko has some sort of connection with the Nakatomi conglomerate. He is trying to rebuild Yatsuro at the Nakatomi factory. Thanks, Ageha. Then off to Nakatomi Plaza. Off to Nakatomi factory. Inside the Nakatomi building, we soon learn this is where they manufactured the laser hallway from Resident Evil 4. Speaking of hallway, this is where Hotsuma fights Kizami, the blind swordsman. He can be really tough at first, but the way the fight plays out it's quite clever. I confess I had to check a guide and game facts, but it all makes sense. Is that the extent of your abilities, master? The area is flooded. Naturally, the swordsman will be attuned to the waves caused by your steps. So you'll want to hug the walls and wait for him to summon the hell spawn. Watch out for the laser and when Akujik is at max power that should be enough to bring the fight to an end. Having defeated the swordsman, it's time to confront old man Hiroko and his special weapon Yatsurao. The big statue seems menacing, however, gameplay wise it can be easily manageable by harnessing Akujik at full power or ninjutsu. Hotsuma defeats Yatsurao whose overflow of yin causes the sorcerer to become young man Hiroko. Young leader of the Aboro. Hiroko! Hotsuma cannot yet bring him down because a familiar face stands in his way. <laughs> What's the matter? Can you not raise your sword against him? Maritsune. <laughs> Hiroko escapes once again, but not before extending an invitation. If you want to finish this, 
come to Kane's shrine. <laughs> Get out of here. It's too dangerous. What about you? I must go to face my fate. At Kane Shrine, Hotama will continue to cut down several foes, including the Kunoichi enemy type who appears for the first time. Yeah, I'm not counting the BDSM type bitch who clings to walls. Rest in peace. Before reaching his destination, a kunai is thrown at Hotsuma. One that will bring a familiar face in the few revelations. It was all... It was all to resurrect Moritsune. I am the one who broke Hiroko's seal. Tradition be damned. I cannot forgive the Oboro for taking Moritsune away from me. The duel you fought with your brother! It was not to decide the next leader! It was to keep Akujiki suppressed by feeding it a spirit! Why? Why did Moritsune have to die for that? Is that why you had the Oboro killed? I... I just wanted to save Moritsune. Just like that time he saved me. And the time is close at hand. I cannot let anyone interfere! That's it, lads. It's a sad moment indeed. It's time to fight Agaha. I gotta tell you, when I reached this boss, I didn't want to fight her. I kept thinking, will Hotsuma really be forced to kill all his fellow clan members and his friends? Well. Time to toughen up and face her. Despite the emotional charge in this stage, Agahe is a really fun boss battle because she's an equal to Hotsuma. She's got the swiftness of an Oboto Shinobi, including the stealth dash technique plus the paralyzing kunai. You'll even realize some cool details such as Agahe apologizing after killing you. Please, forgive me. Hotsuma prevails against his childhood friend. Injured, Agahe flees into the woods. And there he is. The one she loves. Agahe inquires Hiroko if the resurrection ritual is complete and hugs Moritsune, but then... Agaha. The resurrected Moritsune is now nothing but a shell. A vessel for Hiroko's evil designs, or more specifically to carry the Hellspawn Lord Aomizuchi. Yet, there is no time to mourn. Hotsuma must fight his brother one last time. Don't forget Moritsune, even in this Aomizuchi demon lord form is an Oboro ninja. He has the same skills as Hotsuma. He will try to bait you into attacking him just to stealth dash behind you and strike or throw greenish paralyzing kunai. Upon defeating him, the real Moritsune appears even if briefly, reassuring Hotsuma of his revenge quest. Moritsune. Hotsuma. My spirit resides in Akojiki. It has always been with you. I am taking Ageha with me. Take revenge for the Oboro, Hotsuma. Now with the Jade Palace left, it's time for Hotsuma to infiltrate it and finally enact his revenge. You will make your way up and realize the stage boss must be the most unexpected, fearsome and challenging fight yet. It is such a momentous task. It's a, it's a gate. No kidding, the boss in stage 8A is a gate. Inside the actual Jade Palace, Hotsuma will slice and tie to his way through several floors and hordes of enemies, going from a labyrinthian first area up until the final portion of the stage which is a true display of this franchise's platforming roots. At the top, there he is. Of course, Hiroku won't resist giving us a little speech before the final confrontation. Just rubbing it in, how we played right into his hands by eliminating the entire Oboto clan and giving him the power he needed. All to stain your hands with the blood of your own people. You made me collect everyone's souls on purpose. Of course. 
This world is full of filth. In the last century, science has evolved, but have the hearts of men... Hey, actually, that's kind of a nice quote. The gap between those with power and those without has grown. Greed and war blanket the earth. Hey, Hideku has a few points, but no matter. I'm a man on a mission, and my mission is to kick your ass. If you want this life I threw away when I killed my brother, you can have it. However, I shall destroy you along with this accursed blade! For a final boss, Hiroko can be rather annoying because he's a damaged sponge. He's gonna summon a few minions so you can kill and power up Akajiki as all the other bosses do, but they are usually so far apart for you to take him all out and even with Akajiki glowing magenta, Hiroko will need many hits until he's down. So, what I'm trying to say is the final boss is the only one I thought dragged the game down just a tad and Hiroko... You have my permission to go f yourself. After a long, arduous battle that will not so much test your skill, but mostly your patience, at least in the normal difficulty, Hiroku, the evil sorcerer who wanted to bring about chaos to the world, is finally defeated. Hotama is the one left standing, as Akujiki apparently eats up one last yin energy, as the entire Jade Palace crumbles around the last shinobi of the Yoboto clan. The calamity in Tokyo has abated. The sun rises again as helicopters cross the skies and the military come to the rescue of the people. Kagari, the damsel in distress we fought to rescue is right there. But that makes you wonder, what of Hotsuma? What happened to our protagonist? I guess that will be left to speculation, to the imagination of people. After all, the ninja are no strangers to being shrouded in mystery and secrecy. Hotsuma is no different. And, as the credits roll, I ask myself, is this a Greek tragedy or a shinobi fiction? Hotsuma was forced to kill all his clan members, his brother, his childhood friend, and even his master did not survive. Sheesh. It's a sad state of affairs when you stop to read into it, but hey, I still enjoyed the game as a whole, and I sure hope you've enjoyed exploring the game's plot with me so far. Additionally, there's so much action in this game that player will hardly have any time to be depressed. This ain't a Sony exclusive, come on. Now that we're done talking about the plot, how about the good stuff after you beat the game? Firstly, the game's a bit on the shorter side, but just like what I tell the ladies, it doesn't matter how long it is. This game is built for replayability, so if you want to get the most out of it, you'll want to beat it on normal, unlock hard mode, then do the same and get super and go at it again. If you've been collecting the Yoboto coins, you'll unlock not only new artwork for the gallery, but also two new skins. One is Moiritsune, and the other is the OG series protagonist himself, Joe Musashi. Sadly, they don't have different animations, but you'll realize a few details, like different voice clips during Tate animations, but well. And Joe Musashi doesn't carry Akujiki around, so no worry about it trying to eat your soul. And, just like in the 2D games, he has an infinite stock of kunai, but not of a paralyzing kind. After collecting all the Yoboto coins, meaning you'll need to beat the game on all difficulties, you unlock the EX stages, which are special missions to put your shinobi skills to the test. These even include a new enemy type, that giant millipede thing. This game got a sequel called Nightshade. Yeah, such a badass title. But the Japanese version is even more badass. We know that Shinobi is the male ninja. The female ninja is called Konoichi. Yeah, I guess what's the Japanese name exactly? Kunoichi is the Japanese title. Shinobi and Kunoichi. Amazing. This game's protagonist is Hibana, and you can see she's got um, um, a great uh, 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 ninja skills, that's what I mean. Nightshade slash Kunoichi might as well be the next video, but I thank you for watching this one. See you next time.